is a live Bible Questions and Answers program. What kind of Bible question do you have? What subject is of concern to you? Well, this is a program designed to offer you the opportunity to call in and ask questions or comments relating to the Bible. Our host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann, will respond by going to the Bible, the infallible Word of God. Our program is hosted Monday through Friday beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, except Wednesdays when the program begins at noon Eastern. Call our toll-free number at 888-969-9883. Again, that's 888-969-9883. There will be someone there to answer your call and give you simple instructions to be on the program. You can also join us through Zoom video by going to ebiblefellowship.org and clicking the icon at the top. If you're calling in from another country, on our website, select the Toll Free button to find your country's number. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to eBible Fellowship's new Open Forum program. During this time, we're going to open up the phone line to take your call, and each person is invited to give us a call if you have a question or a comment you'd like to make. And I'll try to respond by turning to the Bible, as the Bible is the Word of God. And that is, um, of course, um, a, a truth, it's a fact, that is often um, countered and denied and, and turned from by people of the world. But God's people know. And there's a reason uh, for that, there's a, a reason that so many in the world deny and, and refuse the, um, the truth that the Bible is the Word of God, while, while others embrace it and um, wholeheartedly believe it and follow it. And the reason has to do with one's spiritual condition. As um, sinners, because of their sin, are dead in their spirit. That's, um, the, you know, the thing that the Bible tells us that uh, that is the case with mankind. He is dead in trespasses and sins. He's dead in his soul. And salvation is the restoration of the soul. It is the restoring of life to the spirit of certain ones so that they now have um, a renewed relationship with the God of the Bible, who is spirit. God is spirit. The Bible is his word, and therefore it is a spiritual book. Uh, just consider, you know, the verses that we make reference to often. We are called upon to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. That is, Scripture with Scripture, because all Scripture is spiritual. Romans 7.14 tells us the law, and the Bible is God's law book, mankind's law book, the, the, the law is spiritual. Romans 7, verse 14, and, and uh, it, it, that's the characteristic of the Bible. Now, without a renewed soul, and even in that um, very well-known psalm, Psalm 23, um, the Lord tells us and, and writes in that psalm, He restoreth our soul. And, and that is only true of the saved, of the ones that God has given new hearts and new spirits to. That's the language of the Bible. It's a language we use. We have a new spirit. It's a restored soul. And, and so we are in tune. The energy source, the energy source um, 
uh, of of the individual who has been born again has been turned back on prior to salvation we were in the dark it, it's like a city or a house experiencing a blackout you know when the power goes off and nothing nothing works you can plug something in and turn flip the light switch and nothing is working because the power is off <clears throat> that is that is the spiritual condition of man in his fallen state nothing works properly in his soul excuse me nothing is functioning because he's dead in spirit but once god saves the sinner he he restores the the connection between the man and god himself the energy is back on the energy is back on now lights come on the eyes of your understanding are enlightened the the lamp uh, according to the parable of matthew 25 um the the wise virgins had had uh lamps and the foolish virgins had lamps but only the wise had the oil to light the lamp that's the holy spirit that's a soul restored to life and and when you have the lights go on you can see you can understand you can read the bible with eyes of understanding and and this is why at the time of the end the wise will understand but none of the wicked they are in the dark they are in the dark and and same same thing with the uh idea of christ coming like a thief in the night which he most certainly does for the wicked because they're in darkness and they're caught by him as a thief but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief because we have the light we have the light restored and uh we are able to discern a wise man's heart discerns time and judgment and so the elect of god alive and remaining on the earth we see the time we see um the fact that the church age has ended that god has brought judgment at the house of god all churches of the world and we see that god has brought judgment on the world itself others do not see these things maybe they they profess to see the judgment on the church but but then they refuse the judgment on the world which gives you um uh, you know it, it, it's an indicator something's wrong there something's wrong there and we understand that people can profess uh to to have you know to see certain things and then when the pressure is put to bear they go back from them and 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 so um it is still today that there are some and and they uh will be around the peripheral you know around the edges of the truth and the gospel and they'll they'll um spout certain things that are true and and um those who have who previously had understanding will say oh okay we we still have understanding because um you know we're still following this and following that and and yet uh no they 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 are um rejecting um certain things the revelation of god's righteous judgment in the day of judgment which makes it a very serious matter and 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 so it's just a matter of time just a matter of time before these people or these ministries that that um again have um seemingly a portion uh of truth or an understanding of certain things before they go back from them 
just a matter of time and the putting to bear of certain pressures by God, and and uh, they'll they'll show they have no understanding of the things they profess. Well, um, uh, let's uh, just get uh, to our program here, and we'll go to the first person on the phone today. Welcome to our question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Good morning. Um I have a question on Romans 5, verse 6. Okay, Romans 5, 6. And see. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So um, I was in a conversation with someone that was saying that how could Jesus pay before time, time began, there's this verse that says in due time. So I, I tried to look up that word time and I kind of got a dead end in the concordance because there's so many time. So then I went to the interlinear and I found the, the, the number of the, um, it's two, five, four, zero. And, um, I, I wanted you to compare, I was just going to ask you, um, how do you, if Christ died before time, then what would this verse mean? And if you can compare it to uh, Ephesians 2, 12. Ephesians 2, verse 12. <clears throat> that at that time, excuse me, um, I'll, I'll start in verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh were called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being alienated, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So, um, I thought I was going to ask you if this verse would be a good verse to come back to somebody who's saying, well, Christ didn't, it had to be time when Christ had to come in 33 AD. Um, but then here it says at the time we were without Christ. So even before we were born, we were sinners, right? I'm just trying to figure out this time was questioned to me and I'm not sure how to answer it. Yeah. Um, let, let, let's go back to Romans five. And um, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. So um, Christ died for his elect twice, and and one time. It was in eternity past that the foundation of the world, and he paid all for all the sins, he made payment. That was the offering up of the atonement that the Lord received, payment made in full. The second time, um, he, he still died for the ungodly. He died for his people. Now, he wasn't making payment. <coughs> Excuse me. He, <coughs> he wasn't making payment the second time, but uh, he nonetheless died uh, for the sake of, I think it's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, that we read um, in, um, well, I'll start in verse one, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, 
and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once. The context makes it clear it's speaking of the events that took place on the cross in 33 AD. Um, you know, the fact that, the, first of all, he died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose the third day and then seen. So it flows um, with, with um, you know, the eyewitness accounts. It cannot be referring to the foundation of the world, but it's referring to the demonstration and where it says uh, Christ died for our sins, it, you know, um, the preposition for makes it sound like he, he died to pay for them, but that wasn't the case. This word can um, and is translated uh, as concerning in Romans 9, verse 27, where uh, it says, Romans 9, 27, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, uh, a remnant shall be saved. So it's the word concerning. Uh, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel. That is, it has to do with Israel that, uh, he makes this statement. It, it's related to Israel, and and that's um, uh, again what's in view in First Corinthians fifteen. Um, in verse three, Christ died concerning our sins according to the Scriptures. Everything that uh, he experienced in in his life in his ministry. In going to the cross, um, the the burial, being in the tomb, the resurrection, and then showing himself alive was according to the scriptures, as God foretold it must be, and the Lord fulfilled it, and it was all part of the demonstration. Now, um, back in in uh, Romans five. Uh, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And um, this also ties in with God's salvation program for the New Testament era. When we were without strength uh, in due time, it was in time in history, the Lord died, we know, for or or concerning his people, the ungodly. We, you know, we're all children of wrath, even as others. None of us are godly of ourselves. We were we were wicked, and he died um having to do to show forth his atoning death at the foundation of the world and also his death was significant because the Lord um, speaks of it in 1 John 3, 1 John 3, and in uh, verse 8, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil." For our sins. Our sins kept us in bondage. And we were in bondage to sin and to Satan. Christ um, was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And the Greek word translated destroy is luo. And um uh, luo is a word that means to loose, to loose, to to um, to set free. Um, it, it's 
it's often used um, in relationship to that which is bound. Something is bound, you loose it. And we were bound again um, in captivity to sin and to Satan. Christ loosed us and his manifestation, uh, the Son of God was manifested for that purpose that he might loose the works of the devil. And, and so um, that relates also to what Romans is saying, Romans 5, 9, uh, that, uh, make sure I quote it right, um, or excuse me, Romans 5, 6, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. It, it was a set time in God's program, in his timetable, and this served to loose, to bind Satan at the cross, and to loose the works of the devil um, as the gospel would go forth and Christ would enter into the lives of uh, those that he intended to save in, in the fullness of time for them, uh, in it, it, the fullness of time for each individual. Uh, so um, the due time is 33 AD, but it was he was making manifest what he did before. The foundation of the world. Well, yeah, the the manifestation had everything to do to do with our sins. So it was for the ungodly and concerning our sins, uh, for our sins. Christ died for our sins. Um, he he had to go to the cross for our sins. If uh, you know, same same purpose as the foundation of the world. He died for our sins, concerning our sins, but at that point made payment. And second time, it, it was for our sins as well, without making payment, but to show forth um, that he had made payment at the earlier occasion. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for calling and sharing. And let's go to the next person on the phone today. Welcome to our new open forum program. Please go ahead with your call. Hi, Chris. Can you read um, Deuteronomy 31, verses 6 and 13? Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them, um, nor be afraid of them. For Jehovah thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Verse 13, and that their children which have not known anything may hear, and, uh, well, let's back up a little bit, see what's going on. Um, verse 11, well, verse 10, And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel has come to appear before Jehovah thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing, Gather the people together, men and women, and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn, and fear Jehovah your God, and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children, which have not known anything, may hear, and learn to fear Jehovah your God, as long as ye live in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. Okay, and then could you read? Um, 1 Samuel 15, verse 24. 1 Samuel 15. And verse 24, And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, 
For I have transgressed the commandment of Jehovah in thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Mm -hmm. uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 11. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And then 18 verses 12 and 15 and 29. First Samuel 12. Um, uh, verse, I'm sorry. First Samuel 18 verse 12. 12. Uh, and Saul was afraid of David because Jehovah was with him was departed from him. And then 15? Yeah. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. Mm -hmm. 29? Yeah, thanks. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy co continually. Thank you. I didn't really realize that Saul was so fearful of different types of people, the people in the Philistines and even his son, Jonathan and David. But does it say anywhere that he obeyed the law in, in Deuteronomy 31, where you're supposed to fear the, the God, you're supposed, I mean, you're supposed to fear the Lord. So um, did you ever, uh, hear of any place where Saul feared God and, and maybe that's why like since he represents the churches as, as you had uh, realized that um, you know he would want to he, he feared doing anything that would um, go against the people th there and I didn't understand that thank you well, well yeah I don't know if <clears throat> excuse me, if there's a verse that's somewhere that says Saul feared the Lord, I, you know, I can't think of it. I don't, I don't, I don't recall it, but um, he definitely, you know, the one time when uh, the Lord had told him to utter, utterly destroy the Amalekites and he, he did to a degree he did to a degree. He killed their army, but he spared the king, and he and and he spared uh, the best of their flocks. And uh, and then he told Samuel um, that he had obeyed the word of the Lord, and and that is very um, similar. Excuse me. That is very similar to to the you know the the churches and and how they establish doctrine um you know god commands a certain thing in the bible and the church uh, does it partially they'll you know they'll touch upon it but they don't do it wholly and um and so that that's one thing and then it would it was revealed it was revealed when he was pressed that he did not do uh, exactly as God had commanded, that he feared the people, that the people influenced him. And that definitely uh, plays a part in, um, you know, the, what, the things that happen in the churches and, and the things they teach and the things they won't teach. Um, for example, uh, I I remember I had a course in, in seminary. In seminary, you know, is a place they're training pastors. Um, I I didn't go to seminary to be a pastor. I went, uh, you know, with the idea of being a Christian counselor. But I had the same courses as as all the others, and um, I remember it was in in uh, a class, and our our um, instructor was a pastor of a church, active pastor of a church, and we uh, he gave a subject matter of marriage and divorce, and we had to write a paper, and and um, uh, he um, he gave me a low grade. <laughs> he 
he, he gave me a low grade, although at the time I was doing very well, you know, um, it, and I had at the time all A's and I, I worked hard on it and I knew there was nothing wrong with the paper, but, it, but he really gave me a low grade and uh, I, I brought it up and I asked him and uh, eventually in private, he told me he was trying to save me trouble because in the paper on marriage divorce, I said there's not to be divorce. And, you know, I, uh, I had been listening to Mr. Camping and, and, and um, heard that on family radio and, and checked it out and believed it. And, um, and of course that's not the church's position. You have to have allowance. And that's what he was trying to tell me. Look, if you go in the church, if you enter into the church as a pastor, with this position, you're going to get a lot of grief. And that, it, I, I think that, I wouldn't say all pastors have that mindset, but it is in the back of their mind, in the back of their mind, that this isn't the, the um, uh, authorized position to hold, and, and uh, this will cause me trouble in, in the congregation. Um, and, and so I, it's a fear of man is what it is rather than that shouldn't even enter into the question or, you know, when someone's doing Bible study, when someone is searching the Bible for truth, it should not be. And I'm sure this is the case with pastors. They have their denomination, denominational stance. They have their confessions, their creeds, and they know them. They've been taught those things better than they've been taught the Bible, more than they've been taught the Bible in seminary and in their, their instruction um, for that particular church. And when they're doing Bible study and they're coming, you know, you're, they're a Baptist church and they're coming to something that is very unbaptist like in understanding or they're uh an arminian church and they're coming to a conclusion i mean how can you miss it uh, when you're reading the bible with any kind of integrity and honesty what the so many references to election 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 and and they come to those verses and uh well uh, what do they do? What do they do? Well, they they um, try to justify it in they they have a limitation. They have a a definite limitation put on them by their particular church, by that church's particular doctrines. They start going outside of that. You know, if you're in a free will church and you start preaching. Uh, the truth that God saves according to predestination election. Well, guess why you're you're going to uh, either be out of the pulpit very quickly, or your congregation will be out of the pews very quickly. And that's the example of that man on Family Radio um, that I always forget his name, and I think I did again. But he he was a free will preacher, and he started preaching the truth. And and he had a big church, and not at the time he was done preaching, it it emptied out the the congregation, which really, really is what you want. If the church age was still going on, you want to preach the truth, and you want the tares to flee for the doors. So so you'll start to get a right congregation in the day of the church age, you'll start to get people who are true men. And, and then the Lord could really use that kind of a church at that time. Church age is over, no longer an issue. But uh, you see, that's why it's so freeing. It, 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 it was so wonderful when God ended the church age at the time that he did, when it's so corrupt and apostate. And the people of God came out and were under no um, 
restraint. We we have freedom. We have freedom. That that's one of the big things with Mr. Camping, even when he was in the church, he had the ministry of family radio. And in family radio, they wisely made a decision, you know, from the beginning, they would not associate with any church. And, you know, that was even during the church age. So you can see the error that has crept into family radio at this time. They hitched their wagon completely to the church. And, and it, it would have been a foolish thing to do during the church age. How much worse in the time when the church age is over. But, but the Lord allowed Mr. Camping to have sort of a free reign as he w was doing those studies, you know, and, and the ministry of family radio, the church couldn't tell him what to, what to do when he taught on the airwaves. And, and uh, then finally the freedom of coming out of the church, no more restraints and, and, and just look at all the information that started to flow forth after 2001. There, there wouldn't be freedom in the church. Excuse me. There, there wouldn't be freedom in the church uh, to even begin to explore the avenues, these roads that lead to conclusions, glorious conclusions such as Christ died for sins at the foundation of the world or, or that hell is the grave and man uh, at his his end is to be annihilated rather than to be tormented forever there, there definitely wouldn't have been freedom to search out the subject of the end of the church age are you kidding they they would would have shut shut down pastors who began to do that as quickly as possible and and so many things of time and judgment. Just look, they um, sadly the pastors operated as fowls of the air, not not only in matters of time and judgment, but in many truths where the Bible we learn from the Bible a truth, and and even let's think you know people are hearing these truths on family radio and they're going to church, they're going to church. They hear this wonderful truth. They go to church, and the pastor plucks away the seed. He, you know, he comes down upon it. Uh, no man knows a day or hour. No man knows a day or hour, and and uh, or the church age is over. No, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, and and they they have superficial understanding of scripture for every point, and yet some. Pastors can be very persuasive. Sometimes they're very dynamic speakers and impressive figures. And uh, even especially if they've written books and they're men of renown. And, and, and so their position carries weight. And, and, and you see, if the Lord's people were not called to come out of the church, they, they would receive the, the latter rain and, and the manna coming from heaven over here go back to Egypt and have it snatched away as they sat in, in the congregation. So the Lord necessarily, he had to end the church age. He had to get his people out. It, it would be the only way he could deliver to them the grain, just, just like Jacob and Israel had to come out of Canaan, the, the, uh, Jacob and his sons, they had to come out of Canaan during famine uh, in order to go to Egypt, the world where, where um, um, Joseph, the picture of Christ was, to receive the grain. You can't be fed. They tried it at first. They got the grain and they went back to Canaan the first time. And then it was all used up and, and the, uh, the effects of the famine continued. So, so the grain would not have been able to sustain them. They had to eventually come out to feed upon, in, in the fullness of, of being nourished, to feed upon the grain that Joseph had stored up uh, that proved to be all sufficient, more than they needed, 
to survive the famine. Okay, thank you. Um, he he was afraid of Saul was afraid of the world too, like the Philistines. Don't they represent the world? Like, um. Well, yeah, like as you point out, he he was afraid of David. Um, he was afraid of his own people. He was afraid of the Philistines who were not his people, people outside Israel, so that would point to the world. And he was afraid of David. Um, Jonathan. So, so there we we would see the, the uh, people in the churches have a definite problem with fear, um, and, and they are afraid of their own people concerning their doctrine. They, they have to maintain acceptable doctrine, um, they're afraid of the world. Um, you can see that with the the church that wants to bring in the rock music. They they want to bring in some excitement into the congregation. You right. know, you you can see it. Um, yeah. Like like in churches, uh, I was I was in so called reformed churches, tenth Presbyterian. You know, a very um, at the time, you know, thought of as a very sound church. And on the week, you know, what they did in their youth group was party, party, party. And and on the weekend, sometimes in the summer, you know, oh, Christian dances where they play Christian rock, and it, it was the world come into the church and and why why would the church want want to bring the world in well they wanted to attract the world they wanted to appeal to the world they wanted to be like the world they were afraid to to teach soundly and and to teach rightly and mm -hmm. and to leave off those things for Probably the opinion of the world, uh, you know, oh, these people, you know, they're they're so stiff and and dull and and so it, it gets into that kind of an area, or they wouldn't want to be viewed as holy rollers, you know, as as churches in the South kind of have had that reputation, you know, that where um, other churches they. They they kind of um, you know they uh, get up close to the world and and try to identify yeah. with the world, uh, but as yeah. far as David or Jonathan, that would also be the fear within the congregation of God's presence, His true presence within His elect. Uh, do you think it was pleasant for the pastor after giving a sermon <laughs> and? Uh, he would know. He would know definitely which ones in the congregation um, to expect it from when he said something free will or he said something <clears throat> just incorrect. And and here comes this this one member or this one person uh, always points out to him, you know, Pastor, when you said that. Um, have you ever considered this verse over here? It doesn't seem to allow for that conclusion. And like, like, um, I'll give another personal example. I visited New Hampshire back in the nineties, my wife and I, and, uh, uh, I don't even remember. I think she was pregnant it was before, you know, we, we had any children born and, um, the pastor was preaching um, free will, and I went up to him and I said, well, you know, the Bible teaches election, and here's some verse, and he said, let me stop you there, let me stop you there, because um, you have your verses, your set of verses, I have my set of verses, and, and it's not going to go anywhere, so no sense us even getting into it. And, and, and the, the pastor's probably get it all or used to get it all the time and which is why it was a relief to them in some ways when the saints left when when um, we departed out right. uh, and and all of a sudden uh, we 
uh, were in a church with head coverings, and um, a few did not put on the head coverings, and and other, you know, the rest of the congregation did, and and you see it causes trouble in that kind of situation. Why won't they put on a head covering? They're, you know, you you can't um, partake of the Lord's table. You can't do this. Um, why, why don't you just join in? And 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 that's because um, the Lord's people have a conscience that um, constrains us, and it's the working of the Spirit. We we uh, must do things according to God's will and not the church or man's. And it would have been very disturbing at times, I'm sure, to people in the church. And it's a right. form of fear. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you for calling and sharing. And let's go to the next person on the phone. Today, welcome to our program. Please go ahead with your call. Hello. Hello, Chris. Hello. 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 Can, can you yes, hear me? Yes, we, we, we can hear you. We can hear you very well. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, John chapter 6, verse uh, 40, 44 to 45. John 6, 44. says, no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Okay, this is why I call for, for, for the ex explanation of this and maybe a, a reminder is uh, people that say they don't need anybody to teach them you know it's just all, all I need is the Bible and stuff like that this is a, a, a good text here that that is that, that is the wrong approach John 6 45 don't you think um that uh, you you're saying that this is a good text for those yeah, people that said yeah people that said that uh, we don't need to, we don't we don't need teachers anymore we don't need oh, any, oh, yeah, any yeah. The, the scriptures yeah um yeah well uh, there there's another verse uh, that's similar uh, in Hebrews eight and this is the one I've heard people refer to. In Hebrews 8, in verse um, verse uh, 10 and 11, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. And that's the and, Hebrews. Yeah, Hebrews 8, 11, because this okay. says they shall not teach. Um, they, they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. But what they mm -hmm. they uh, zero in on, not teach. See that um, some have have put forth. Well, there was a time for teaching. There was a time for teaching over the church age with the latter rain, but we've come to the point where we will not teach. We will not teach. Everyone, everyone just reads the Bible themselves. And <laughs> what what's funny? <laughs> what what's funny is that um, the couple of people that have that have put this forth, um, they they love to teach it. 
uh, it, which is ironic, isn't it? They yeah. you see they're caught. They're caught in their own trap because they say there's not to be teachers, not to be teachers. Uh, uh, we're not anymore. We're only to read the Bible. So they teach because what they're that's teaching. They're trying to teach that there's not to be teachers, and they they have caught themselves. And when it's pointed out, they they never have an answer for that. Um, and and, and uh, finally, um, a couple that I had encounters with, they finally got quiet about it because I would point it out every time they brought it up. But they, it's a misunderstanding. It's a misunderstanding. I mean, they have some things correct concerning the time period. We are in the time of there's no more evangelization of the world, e evangelization in the sense of the gospels to go forth um, so that people become saved. And that's really what's in view because they shall not teach. <clears throat> Well, well, excuse me, the previous verse is important. Uh, it says, I will put my laws into their mind, write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. In other words, that's salvation. I will save them. I will save my people, is basically what God is saying. And after he has saved his people, he's put his law into their heart. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall, all, all the elect, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. In, in other words, they will not teach to know the Lord because all already do know the Lord. And and that has to do with being saved. The word no, the word no, experiential, it, it is how it's being used. Um, we, we understand that in the Old Testament, uh, God speaks of being known in judgment. They shall know that I am Jehovah when he drowns Pharaoh and the Egyptians in the Red Sea. Well, likewise... <laughs> It's used in the sense of salvation. Um, if we go to um, Ezekiel, I didn't, I didn't jot down the verse, but it, it's Ezekiel chapter. Um, well, here's here's one place. Uh, chapter thirty six, verse thirty eight is the holy flock is the flock of Jerusalem. In her solemn feast, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men. That's That only happens with salvation. And they shall know that I am Jehovah. There's, there's at least a couple of other references like that. A positive sense of knowing God as Jehovah through the experience of salvation. It, uh, to know Jehovah, you can either know him in his wrath and judgment, the experience of that, or you can know him in his grace and mercy, in salvation, the experience of that. And all people will know Jehovah one way or the other. Here, it's, it's clearly speaking of salvation, um, and, and 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 remember the gospel was go ye into all the world in Matthew 28 um the great commission Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19 go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded, commanded you. Go mm -hmm. ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and, and, and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Now, um, some, well, many 
think that we're still to do this, that the Great Commission is still in effect. And no, it's been fulfilled. It's been fulfilled. Go and teach all nations. Does that mean that every political nation in the world? I guess there's 190, 195 of them. Um, do we do we have to teach all nations of of the world? No. Well, if that were the case, then the Great Commission has yeah. been a failure, a failure because for much of the New Testament era, there were many nations not taught for whole generations. Um, you know, they didn't even know there were the the world um uh it was was um of the middle east and europe and 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 uh you know parts of africa and and parts of asia um and there wasn't even understanding that there were people um who were on certain continents in Australia or, or um, on uh, North America, the Indians or the Mayans or, or the Pacific Islander uh, people, the tribes, you know, on, on Pacific Islands that missionaries didn't come to until 17th, 18th, 19th century. And, and, and so go ye and teach all nations. Well, even in nations um, that were known nations, they due to uh, geography or or the uh, political uh, climate of that nation, they they resisted. No, we want no gospel here, and and just uh, or or the gospels rejected. Just so many uh, people were not taught and were not baptized, that we would say, well, the Great Commission had some success, but overall, not too much. Not too much. Until we realize that the Great Commission uh, was not, it never was God's intent or purpose to to cover all nations and all people within the nations. No, uh, what, what he meant was the nations of them which are saved, or, or the, the elect, the, those who were predestinated to obtain salvation, like in Revelation 21, in verse uh, 24, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. The nations of them which are saved as compared to Luke 12, Luke chapter 12, and in um, verse, verse 30, yeah, verse 30, Luke 12, verse 30, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after. See, there's there's two different kinds of nations. There's the nations of the elect, then which are saved, and the nations of the world. And that's what God told Rebecca when she had twins in her womb who were struggling. She said, uh, the Lord told her because she wondered why it was the case. And the Lord told her there are two kinds of people, two manner of people in your womb, two nations, distinct, um, set apart, or different nations. And, and it's those of the world that would align with um, Esau, and those of the elect that would align with Jacob. And, and, and so um, the, the Great Commission, go ye and teach all nations. We were sent like Christ was sent by the Father. And to whom was Christ sent? Remember what Jesus said when uh, there was a, a Syrophoenician woman, a woman of Canaan, who, who came to him for her daughter? And Jesus said, I am not sent 
but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Very specific purpose in who he was sent to find the, the shepherd seeking the sheep, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He, he's not sent to Canaan or the people of the world. Oh, but he did. He did uh, hearken to her and heal her daughter. And actually, he saved that woman. He said, great is thy faith, because she was a lost sheep of the house of Israel. She was a, of spiritual Israel. And, and so Christ had a specific people group, although they're scattered among the nations, and they, they are of uh, every tribe, nation, tongue, and so forth, but a specific people chosen by God, Christ was sent for them, then he sent us to the same group. Teach all nations, all the elect. And finally, all nations were taught. All nations were taught, and uh, by May 21, 2011, God completed the, um, the, the um, salvation of, of all whose names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And not only were all nations taught, all nations were baptized, not in water, but in spirit baptized by the Holy Spirit through salvation. There's probably more people alive on the earth right now, that great multitude, who have never been baptized in water because they're out there in Muslim lands and in India and China and Vietnam and all over, and they were not part of a church, so they were never baptized in water but they experienced the, the reality of baptism, or what water baptism was a sign pointed to, was baptism of the Holy Spirit. So all nations were taught, all nations were baptized, and the Great Commission was a 100% success, perfect uh, fulfillment of that command of God, and we're, of course, we're living in a time where there is no further call or commission for us to go to the nations because all nations have been taught. They've been taught. Uh, and, and it's in, uh, taught to know the Lord. And now they know him through salvation. And, and you see the, the beautiful harmony of all yeah. this understanding. Now, so it has nothing to do with ongoing teaching, you know, uh, <clears throat> as some would would teach. <laughs> they some would would teach others, and uh, that no, you, you you see, we're not to have teachers. They teach, but uh, and uh, God confounded them on that point, so not too many would follow them because if they're going to be faithful to their doctrine, they can't tell anyone about it. But uh, it, it's an incorrect understanding anyway. But uh, it, it's only in the sense taught in knowing God through salvation. And, you know, we, we're free, uh, of course. We're at liberty. We, we can go into the Bible. And how, uh, you know, how uh, really contrary it is um to 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 the the whole idea of bible study you know the the lord didn't call us to go study your bibles and study to show yourself approved the workman needeth not to be ashamed meditate upon these things compare scripture with scripture so much effort so much um you know carefulness so much work all to just feed ourselves you know, you, you go to the Bible, you learn all these things, and then you don't tell anybody? That that right. goes against the, the very heart of the Word of God. You know, God oh. is a teacher, and, and the people of God, we uh, when, when we share properly, when we do it rightly, we're not even the ones teaching. 
the the Holy Ghost teaches. And and so yeah, just so much so much wrong with with that. Uh, but it was out there for a time, especially after May 21, 2011, you know, everybody what was just basically let let's uh hunker down in our home and and uh just stay quiet and and just stay to ourselves and it is it's very selfish really. But thank you for thank you, Chris. For that good verse and question. I would like to thank everyone for joining us today and sharing your questions and comments and especially the Bible verses we had a chance to read and consider. We have come to the end of our time at this point. Lord willing, we'll have another open forum program tomorrow evening. Normally this program is 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Only on Wednesday is it this time, uh, but the rest of the week, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. So Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow evening, 6 p.m., on the east coast 3 p.m on the west coast and um and may you have a good rest of the day and may the lord's perfect will be done thanks again for joining us for e-bible fellowships live open forum program you can call in with your bible questions mondays and tuesdays thursdays and fridays beginning at 6 p.m eastern and Wednesdays beginning at noon Eastern.